my name is Dustin, and we are the team behind Cygnus, a 2D platforming game. Uh, so let me introduce our team. Our team is broken into two sections. Uh, one section dealt with content creation, one section dealt with uh, tools and systems. Uh, my name is Dustin Grady. My name is John Sullivan. My name is Brooke Fair. I'm Daniel Cruz. I'm Scott Grether. I'm Tyler Charkin. So our motivation is that there's currently sort of a renaissance of 2D platformer games. There's a resurgence, a lot of them are coming out. So we wanted to capitalize on that market and make our own with a familiar feel to all the other 2D platformers, but with unique mechanic in that uh, our game, you can control and harness the elements. You can absorb them from the environment, use them to defeat enemies, solve puzzles, or interact with other parts of the environment, uh, and even combine them to get new elements. Uh, and it's, we think that this sort of makes our game unique enough to stand out. So our objective for Cygnus was to create an interesting 2D platforming game that uses our core mechanic of absorbing elements in the, envir in the environment to uh, keep the player interact or interested and having a good time while playing it. We shot for two to three hours of gameplay over various levels in our game. Uh, each of these levels has their own unique environments and challenges that the player will have to overcome. Sorry. Uh, we also hope to release on Steam and itch.io in the future. So on the content team, uh, we began our process by creating a mock-up of each level on paper. And then we took that mock-up and we created it in Unity's Tile Map Editor. And at this point, we could start experimenting and doing play testing to see what works and what doesn't. Uh, this is a highly iterative part of the process where we allow people to test it, we put that feedback, and we can improve upon it. Um, if we find that the challenges are successful, then we then polish it by adding dialogue, um, non-player characters for the player to interact with, um, and then we uh, do the additional scripting to make all of the events happen as they're supposed to. Um, our team also handled coordinating with the artists since we are the ones who are actually integrating that art into the game. So this is an example, a mock-up. Um, we use this as a blueprint before building it in Unity. Um, for, this ex for this particular mock-up, we decided to go with uh, a teleporter puzzle, some obstacles, uh, and a linear progression of the level with a boss at the end. So if you go to the next slide, this is the end result of that mock-up. Um, as you can see, the major components are there uh, with the obstacles and the boss at the end. And there are a few aesthetic changes um, just to make it look nice. So here is a video of what a boss encounter looks like in the game. Uh, this is what the uh, content team works on. When the player jumps in, you know the door needs to close. The player just can't leave. The screen starts shaking, and the player has to successfully uh, uh, combat the boss. And here's an example of how the content team and the systems team work together. The as as a content team member, I wanted a way to have burnable foliage the player has to contend with uh, and, in this case, use to their environment uh, this mechanic. So I had the systems team create this mechanic and I was able to incorporate it in my level. So the tools and systems team were uh, concerned with the uh, technical aspects of the game. Um, we created the tools that the uh, content uh, team would use to make the game and also that involves making sure that the presentation of the game is consistent. Uh, you saw an example there with the uh, burning foliage and also the, uh, the enemy AI that was uh, targeting the player. Uh, we have another example up here that uh, shows um, uh, character interaction in the game. So um, you'll see some characters throughout the game that will be able to talk to that uh, advances a narrative. And in order to properly structure that narrative and uh, have it presented correctly, uh, we gave the uh, content team tool this uh, dialogue tree structure that you could um, create the uh, different player interactions with and then eventually be presented into uh, this uh, pane on the uh, left right here. And another example of a tool that we had to create, um, uh, Unity doesn't have any form of like uh, uh, built-in representation of slope surfaces in its uh, pile map editor. 
Uh, so we had to create this uh, slope brush tool uh, so that we'd have um, consistent slopes throughout the game so that uh, content creators wouldn't have to constantly just like repeat that process and create slope surfaces. Just have it once, they can place them how they want, uh, increase and decrease the slope. So this is a very simple example of how uh, requirements can change during the development process. Uh, so, um, as was stated before, the tools team and the content team had to be in constant communication. So, for example, this is an enemy, an unanimated enemy, uh, kind of patrolling back and forth. Um, initially, uh, the enemy basically has like a walking stick where they'll look for uh, obstacles in front of them and you know make an action based on that. So, they would at first look for a ledge and avoid that. Uh, the tools, I'm sorry, the content team later said that they wanted them to avoid hazardous elements also. So you can see this um, fire element here that the enemy will also avoid. We want to take this time to say thank you to our mentors, Dr. Christoph Pietrzek and Dr. Miguel Lor, and also our art team that was working out of San Jose State University, Tyler Standard, Kevin Nguyen, and Greg Bush.